We will keep your Bibles open to the Bible reading in Mark, in Mark chapter 7. That's the basis for our lesson this morning. This morning I want to talk to you about tradition or commandment. Today in the world we live, we value, or at least some people value tradition. And I happen to be one of those people. But tradition is something that I struggle with. I like doing things a certain way. My wife will tell you that I am a creature of habit. Once I get into a habit or a routine, it is more comforting for me personally to remain in that habit or routine. Although I do like to experiment with certain things, certain aspects, I still find comfort in what I know and what is, for me, habitual. Christianity has existed since the time of Christ, since, since really Mark wrote these words in Mark chapter 7. Christianity over 2,000 years ago was established. Now over 2,000 years, changes have occurred. Is there any doubt in anyone's mind that change has come into what we know of as Christianity. I think it's obvious by the number of, the sheer number of denominations that exist. And if we look at the denominations, every denomination has their own, if you will, traditions. And so, Change happens, change occurs, and sometimes we don't understand that change. Maybe we find ourselves doing things out of habit or out of tradition. Is that wrong? I want to try to answer that question this as I said, it is human nature. We are creatures of habit. Look where you sit this morning. You came in and you have formed a habit. I can almost, you know, every time I go into a congregation to preach, I notice where people sit. I knew one person uh, many years ago who made a preacher a map with names as to who sat where because everybody always sat in the same place. We are creatures of habit. We do the same things over and over again, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, Jesus identifies a problem in dealing with the tradition of the Jewish people, particularly that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Now they come to him with a question. They're questioning Jesus. Because he's breaking with tradition. But in verse 8, Jesus identifies the problem with their tradition. He says, you leave the commandment of God and hold the tradition of men. Now there's where there's a problem. When our tradition or habit becomes more important to us than the word of God. That's where the problem lies. One fundamental difference between how I grew up and what I now practice in my faith is tradition. I grew up in a system that was based on tradition. I'm not saying that habits are bad. But in the Catholic Church, there are two binding elements that are seen as author, uh, authoritative, if you will. The first is the doctrine, the written doctrine of the Catholic Church, known as the Catechism. The Catechism is a law book and is laid out like any other, if you look up the Ohio Revised Code. Law books are written in a certain formation. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is written in that formation, and it gives you paragraphs and reference points within paragraphs. If you're looking up where the Catholic stance is on a particular issue, 
you refer to the catechism book. Second binding is tradition, which I find very interesting. These are, these are traditions that are not written in the catechism book, but they are seen as binding. If you don't believe me, check out catholic.com. And they will talk about these things on the website catholic.com. So I grew up with a, a, in a group that practiced things based on this is our doctrine on tradition, just because we've done this for hundreds of years, and it is considered to be Yeah, nothing wrong with tradition. Almost everyone would consider that we have here at Second Street what, what is considered to be a traditional worship service. I have no problem with that. But if you wonder why we do things in a particular order, it's based not on tradition, but it's, it's based on what we see in the Bible. Now, again, is it considered traditional? Absolutely. Probably conservative traditional. The problem was, in Jesus' time, that they would set aside, and you see right here in, in Mark's gospel, in our Bible reading, there's an issue that Jesus points out as something that is important. He says in verse 9, he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. So what happened in Jesus' time by the Pharisees, which was a conservative religious sect, okay, they were the conservatives of Jesus' day in both political sense and religious sense. The scribes were not supposed to be political. The scribes were the equivalent of the United States Supreme Court. Not supposed to be political. They're supposed to be unbiased. They're scholars that studied the law of Moses and in fact, some of them copied the law. A scribe means a secretary, or before printing presses, they were the ones who wrote the scriptures. So they, they're, they're the ones who have opened this can of worms. And Jesus said that they do a wonderful job of holding tradition at the expense of the word of God. Verse 10 says, for Moses said, honor your father and mother. Okay, we just studied that on Wednesday nights the Ten Commandments. Honor thy father and thy mother. Okay? Now, he goes on to say, whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. Now, we've not gone to that point, but there is a point in the Old Testament where Moses wrote that down. One who rejected his father and mother. A rebellious child was to be stoned to death. Verse 11, Jesus says, but you say. Now here's where the, here's where the, here's where the parting of Bible and tradition. Okay, the Bible, Jesus has just stated what the Bible says, honor your father and mother. However, Jewish tradition said, if a man tells his father and mother, whatever you could have gained by me is korban. Now, korban simply means, it's a Jewish term, a Hebrew term, that simply means given to God. In other words, if you don't want to take care of your parents as, an old, as old people and you're Jewish, you can say, whatever, whatever I would have inherited from you is to be given to God then suddenly you're exempt from any responsibility to your parents. He says, then you, uh, you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your traditions at, that you have handed down and many such things you do. He's drawing a point of this. Now, if you'll turn with me very quickly back to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27. 
In Matthew chapter 27, verse 29, we see another problem with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The both, both liberals and conservatives have decided here in Matthew chapter 27 that they're going to lay a trap for Jesus. The, these two groups that normally have nothing to do with each other have decided that they have a common threat, a common enemy in the form of Jesus Christ. 